The blue kua is an omnivore-eating insects, fruits, and small reptiles in subtropical or tropical dry forest, mangrove and moist montane forest. The females lay one white egg on a platform nest, constructed of leaves and twigs on a tree branch. The bird's feathers are a deep blue and there is a distinctive blue oval area around the eye which is free of feathers. Like all cuckoos they have large feet, with a reversible third toe. It has a bulky silhouette and short, broad wings and long tail, all of which can be seen when gliding between trees. The common cuckoo is a medium-sized bird with a slender body, long tail, and pointed wings. It has a grayish-brown coloration with a pale belly and a barred pattern on its underparts. The barred underparts resemble those of the Eurasian sparrowhawk, a predator of adult birds, it is likely to help the cuckoo access the nests of potential hosts. One its most fascinating aspects behavior is its reproductive strategy known as brood parasitism. Female cuckoos lay their eggs in the nests of other bird species, often removing one of the host's eggs before laying their own. The host species then unwittingly raises the cuckoo chick as if it were its own. Species whose broods are parasitized by the common cuckoo have evolved to discriminate against cuckoo eggs but not chicks. Experiments have shown that common cuckoo chicks persuade their host parents to feed them by making a rapid begging call that sounds remarkably like a whole brood of host chicks. The call of the common cuckoo is well known and often associated with the arrival of spring. Because of the greater roadrunner's diurnal nature and arid habitat, it has various biological and behavioral adaptations, known as thermoregulation, to reduce dehydration and overheating. During the hot season, it is active mostly from sunrise to mid-morning, and late afternoon to evening. It rests in the shade during the hottest part of the day. It reduces excess heat by the formation of water vapor, released by breathing or through the skin. They can maintain a speed of 30 km per hour over long distances. While running, it places its head and tail parallel to the ground and uses its tail as a rudder to help change its direction. It prefers to run in open areas, such as roads, packed trails and dry riverbeds rather than dense vegetation. The greater roadrunner uses its speed to run down prey. Measuring 55 cm in length, Kagu has pale gray plumage and bright red legs. Its nasal corns are a unique feature not shared with any other bird. Almost flightless, it spends its time on or near the ground, where it hunts its invertebrate prey, and builds a nest of sticks on the forest floor. Both parents share incubation of a single egg, as well as rearing the chick. It has proven vulnerable to introduced predators and is threatened with extinction. Recent research has shown that naturally occurring heavy metals in the soil may affect kagu through their food supply. Kagu in areas where soil levels of heavy metals were low laid more eggs and had higher numbers of fledglings, as well as having smaller home ranges and higher body mass, than kagu in areas where the soil was heavy metal rich. The yellow-billed loon is the largest member of the loon family. Breeding adults have a black head, white underparts, and checkered black and white mantle. Its main distinguishing feature is the long straw yellow bill which, because the culmen is straight, appears slightly up-tilted. This species, like all divers, is a specialist fish eater, catching its prey underwater. Loons are excellent swimmers, using their feet to propel themselves above and underwater. However, since their feet are located far back on the body, loons have difficulty walking on land, though they can effectively run short distances to reach water when frightened. Thus, loons avoid coming to land, except for mating and nesting. The Pacific loon constructs its nest on the ground near deep lakes. 
This nest is made out of piled up vegetation. Socially monogamous, they have been found to have high territory retention rates indicating that the loons are able to successfully defend their nesting lake from other loon pairs or individuals who may be trying to move in. Furthermore, males have a greater success at territory retention than females, but no evidence suggests that this difference is attributed to size but is rather due to fighting ability or familiarity with territory. Waimanu is a genus of early penguin which lived during the Paleocene, soon after the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event. It was about the size of an emperor penguin. It is one of the most important bird fossils for understanding the origin and evolution of birds because of the time period it comes from, and the position of penguins near the base of the bird family tree. It was a very early member of the Sphiniciforms. However, Although it was probably flightless like all modern penguins, with wings specialized for wing-propelled diving, its wing bones do not yet show the extreme specializations modern penguins have for an aquatic lifestyle. It may have resembled a flightless loon in body shape, and possibly the great auk in its manner of locomotion. Kumamanu lived in New Zealand, which was subtropical during much of the Paleocene era. There were many organisms in these waters including sea turtles and various fishes. They were likely similar to modern-day penguins in the way they lived. However, these monster birds were likely able to consume larger prey due to their size. Total length from tip of the beak and tail is approximately 170 meters, and weighing over 90 kilograms, being thus the second largest penguin thus far known. Anthropornis reached 1.8 meters in length from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail, and over 100 kilograms in weight. Fossils of it have been found in the La Meseta Formation on Seymour Island off the coast of Antarctica and in New Zealand. By comparison, the type species, Anthropornis nordensk joldi, had a bent joint in the wing, probably a vestigial trait from its flying ancestors. Icodips appear to have flourished at warmer latitudes at a time when world temperatures were at their warmest over the past 65 million years. Only a few modern-day penguins, such as the African penguins prefer such a balmy climate. The discovery of the fossils has caused a re-evaluation of penguin evolution and expansion. Previously, scientists believed that penguins evolved near the poles in Antarctica and New Zealand, and moved closer to the equator around 10 million years ago. Since Icodips lived in Peru during a period of great warmth, penguins must have adapted to warm climates around 30 million years earlier than previously believed. Paleodips gunnari, also referred to as the narrow-flippered penguin, was a huge species, albeit probably with a large size variation. Although the size range can only be loosely estimated, the bird seemed to have stood between 1 to 1 for meters high in life, placing this species among the largest penguin species known. It was the last known Paleodip species, and although the exact time when it lived is not precisely determined, it may have evolved from Paleodipters marplesi, or they might even have been a single species which slightly decreased in size over time. Inkayaku inhabited a sea that existed in Peru during the late Eocene. Paddle-like limbs enabled an aquatic lifestyle. The large tightly packed melanosomes within the cells of living penguins gives the feathers added rigidity, which may be an adaptation for coping with the stresses of underwater flight. Because Inkayaku has smaller and fewer melanosomes, it may not have been able to swim very deep, possibly remaining near the surface. However, it is also possible that the melanosomes of modern penguins do not give them an advantage underwater, since the feathers on their undersides are primarily white, lacking the rigidity of melanin. If melanin is present in the feathers to add rigidity, it would be expected that all feathers on living penguins would be black. Their shape suggests that Inkayaku had gray and reddish-brown feathering across its body. 
The emperor penguin is the tallest and heaviest of all living penguin species and is endemic to Antarctica. The male and female are similar in plumage and size, reaching 1 meter in length and weighing from 22 to 45 kilograms feathers of the head and back are black and sharply delineated from the white belly, pale yellow breast and bright yellow ear patches. Like all penguins, it is flightless, with a streamlined body, and wings stiffened and flattened into flippers for a marine habitat. Its diet consists primarily of fish, but also includes crustaceans, such as krill and cephalopods. While hunting, the species can remain submerged around 20 minutes, diving to a depth of 530 meters it has several adaptations to facilitate this, including an unusually structured hemoglobin to allow it to function at low oxygen levels, solid bones to reduce barotrauma, and the ability to reduce its metabolism and shut down non-essential organ functions. The female lays a single egg, which is incubated for just over two months by the male while the female returns to the sea to feed, parents subsequently take turns foraging at sea and caring for their chick in the colony. The lifespan is typically 20 years in the wild. King penguins are the second largest species of living penguin. They have a distinctive appearance with a black head, back, and flippers, while their belly is a bright and contrasting white. They also have colorful orange patches on their necks. They have several adaptations to thrive in cold environments, including a layer of blubber beneath their skin for insulation and a dense layer of feathers that provides additional warmth. Unlike some other penguin species, they do not build nests. Instead, they incubate their single egg on their feet, covered by a flap of abdominal skin. Both parents take turns incubating the egg and caring for the chick. King penguins undergo an annual molt during which they shed their old feathers and grow new ones. During the molt, they are unable to enter the water to forage, so they build up a thick layer of blubber to sustain them during this period. The global population of king penguins is currently considered to be of least concern by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. However, local populations may face threats such as climate change, fisheries and human disturbance. Adelie penguins nest in colonies on rocky, ice-free areas along the Antarctic coastline. They build nests using stones, pebbles and guano, often forming a circular structure known as a rookery. They are migratory, spending the winter at sea and returning to their breeding colonies in the Antarctic spring and summer. They can travel long distances in search of food during the non-breeding season. They are agile swimmers and skilled hunters, using their streamlined bodies and flipper-like wings to propel themselves underwater. They often form large colonies, and their breeding colonies can consist of thousands or even millions of individuals. Social interactions within the colony are essential for breeding success. Adelie penguins are considered an indicator species for the impacts of climate change. Changes in sea ice conditions and temperature can affect their prey availability and breeding success. Adelie penguins are faced with extreme osmotic conditions, as their frozen habitats offer little fresh water. Such desert conditions mean that the vast majority of the available water is highly saline, causing the diets of Adelie penguins to be heavy in salt. The Gentoo's diet is high in salt, as they eat organisms with relatively the same salinity as seawater, which can lead to complications associated with high sodium concentrations in the body, especially for genta chicks. To counteract this, gentoos, as well as many other marine bird species, have a highly developed salt gland located above their eyes that takes the high concentration of sodium within the body and produces a highly saline concentrated solution that drips out of the body from the tip of the beak. Gentoo penguins do not store as much fat as Adelie penguins, their closest relative, gentoos require less energy investment when hunting because the net gain of energy after hunting is greater in gentoos than Adelie's. As embryos, gentoos require a lot of energy to develop. Oxygen consumption is high for a developing gentoo embryo. As the embryo grows and requires more oxygen, consumption increases exponentially until the gentoo chick hatches.
The diet of the chinstrap penguin consists of small fish, krill, shrimp, and squid, for which they swim up to 80 kilometers offshore each day to obtain. Its tightly packed feathers provide a waterproof coat, enabling it to swim in freezing waters. Additionally, thick blubber deposits and intricate blood vessels in the flippers and legs assist in the preservation of heat. Its main predator of the chinstrap penguin at sea is the leopard seal. Every year, the leopard seal causes the chinstrap's population to decrease by about 5% to 20%. On land, they build circular nests from stones, and lay two eggs, which are incubated by both the male and the female for shifts around six days each. The chicks hatch after around 37 days, and have fluffy gray backs and white fronts. Chinstrap penguins are generally considered to be the most aggressive and ill-tempered species of penguin. Little penguins are the smallest species of penguins. They typically stand around 30 centimeters tall and weigh about 1 kilogram they have a distinctive blue-gray plumage on their back, with a white front. This coloration provides camouflage when seen from above or below. They are nocturnal, spending the day at sea hunting for food and returning to their nests at night. This behavior helps avoid predators such as seabirds and large fish. Little penguins face threats from various predators, including seabirds, sharks, and introduced species like foxes and dogs. Some colonies, especially in Australia, have become popular tourist attractions. Due to the marked decline of sardines in the waters and near its habitat, African penguins' diet has shifted towards anchovies to some extent, although available sardine biomass is still a notable determinant of penguin population development and breeding success. While a diet of anchovies appears to be generally sufficient for the penguins, it is not ideal due to anchovies' lower concentrations of fat and protein. African penguins are a commonly seen species in zoos across the world. Because they do not require particularly low temperatures, they are often kept in outside enclosures. They adapt fairly well to this captive environment and are rather easy to breed compared to other species of the family. The total breeding population across both South Africa and Namibia fell to a historic low of about 20,850 pairs in 2019. The Humboldt penguin is a medium-sized penguin. It resides in South America, its range mainly contains most of coastal Peru. Its nearest relatives are the African penguin. The Humboldt penguin and the cold water current it swims in both are named after the explorer Alexander von Humboldt. The species is listed as vulnerable with no population recovery plan in place. The current population is composed of 32,000 mature individuals and is going down. It is a migrant species. They nest on islands and rocky coasts, burrowing holes in guano and sometimes using scrapes or caves. The Humboldt penguin has become a focus of ecotourism over the last decades. The estimated energetic demands of the total Humboldt penguin population during breeding season sums up to 1,400 tons of fish. It depends on commercially exploited, schooling prey species including anchovies. This makes them susceptible to changes in prey availability due to overfishing. They are also susceptible to entanglement in fishing nets. They are extremely sensitive to human presence, with little habituation potential. Southern rockhopper penguin common name refers to the fact that, unlike many other penguins which get around obstacles by sliding on their bellies or by awkward climbing using their flipper-like wings as aid, rockhoppers will try to jump over boulders and across cracks. This behavior is by no means unique to this species however, at least the other crested penguins of the genus Eudyptes hop around rocks too. But the rockhopper's congeners occur on remote islands in the New Zealand region, whereas the rockhopper penguins are found in places that were visited by explorers and whalers since the early modern era. Hence, it is this particular species in which this behavior was first noted. Their breeding colonies are located from sea level to cliff tops and sometimes inland. 
Their breeding season starts in September and ends in November. Two eggs are laid but only one is usually incubated. Incubation lasts 35 days and their chicks are brooded for 26 days. Albatrosses are among the largest of flying birds, and species of the genus have the longest wingspans of any extant birds, reaching up to 3. 7 meters The albatrosses are usually regarded as falling into four genera, but disagreement exists over the number of species. They are highly efficient in the air, using dynamic soaring and slope soaring to cover great distances with little exertion. They feed on squid, fish, and krill by either scavenging, surface seizing, or diving. Albatrosses are colonial, nesting for the most part on remote oceanic islands, often with several species nesting together. Pair bonds between males and females form over several years, with the use of ritualized dances, and last for the life of the pair. Of the 22 species of albatrosses recognized by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, 21 are listed as at some level of concern, two species are critically endangered, seven species are endangered, six species are vulnerable, and six species are near threatened. Numbers of albatrosses have declined in the past due to harvesting for feathers. They are threatened by introduced species, such as rats and feral cats that attack eggs, chicks and nesting adults. By pollution, by a serious decline in fish stocks in many regions largely due to overfishing, and by longline fishing. Longline fisheries pose the greatest threat, as feeding birds are attracted to the bait, become hooked on the lines, and drown. Identified stakeholders such as governments, conservation organizations, and people in the fishing industry are all working toward reducing this bycatch. The Lyson albatross is normally a silent bird, but on occasion may be observed emitting long ing sounds, descending whinnies, or rattles. Female Lyson albatrosses may bond for life and cooperatively raise their young. A female named Wisdom is the oldest known wild bird in the world. Because they cannot breed until they are five years old, as of 2016, Wisdom was estimated to be at least 66 years old. The Lyson albatross feeds predominantly on cephalopods, but also eats fish, crustaceans, and other invertebrates. The gray-headed albatross averages 80 centimeters in length and 2.2 meters in wingspan. It has a dark ashy gray head, throat and upper neck, and its upper wings, mantle and tail, are almost black. It has a white rump, underparts, and a white crescent behind its eyes. At sea the gray-headed albatross is highly pelagic, more so than other mollymocks, feeding in the open oceans rather than over the continental shelves. They feed predominantly on squid, taking also some fish, crustacea, carrion, cephalopods, and lampreys. Krill is less important as a food source for this species, reflecting their more pelagic feeding range. They are capable of diving as deep as 7 meters to chase prey, but do not do so frequently. Petrels are seabirds adapted to a marine lifestyle and are highly skilled flyers. They typically have long, pointed wings, allowing them to cover large distances with efficient gliding flight. This adaptation is essential for their foraging and migratory behaviors. Petrels, like other members of the Procellariiformes order, are often referred to as tubnoses because of their specialized nasal passages. These tubular nostrils help excrete excess salt from seawater and reduce the ingestion of salt during feeding. Giant petrel, like all members of the Procellariiformes, have features that set them apart from other birds. First, they have nasal passages called naricorns, that attach to the upper bill. The nose holes on the petrels are on the top of the bill. 
The bills of all Procellariiformes are also unique in that they are split into between seven and nine horny plates. They produce a stomach oil made up of wax esters and triglycerides that is stored in the proventriculus. This can be sprayed out of their mouths as a defense against predators and used as an energy-rich food source for chicks and for the adults during their long flights. They have above the nasal passage a salt gland, which helps to remove salt from their blood, this salt, primarily sodium chloride, is in their marine invertebrate food and in the large amount of ocean water that they imbibe, it excretes a concentrated salt solution from the nostrils. The southern giant petrel is an extremely aggressive predator and will kill other seabirds.